Hey, what's up guys? This is Federal Cubes here, and in this video we will be finishing up the game logic and um, we'll actually be able to play the game. That, that is what I hope at least. Anyways, right here for this, um, add in this line of code here, I forgot to do that in the last video, so make sure in the constructor you set the slide to point to whatever x and y is given to the tile. Otherwise, this could cause the tile to slide to like 0, 0. Okay, um, I think that's it for this class. We don't really need to touch tile at all. But we do have a lot to do in the game board class. So the first thing we're going to do is, um, we're not going to get to this yet. But we are going to do this. Alright, so we're going to check that. Alright, so... Make a new method, private void check dead. And this method is going to do exactly what it says. It's going to check if you're dead. So, this is how I'm doing it. I'm sure there's a faster way to do it, but this is really the simplest way to do it. What you're going to do is go through each tile and check if there's a tile or, or a space that it can move to besides it. It's that simple. So if board at row and column equals null, then return. Uh, so obviously you're not dead if there's a spot you can move to. Otherwise, set a boolean can combine equal to check surrounding. Or you could just say this, hold on. If check surrounding, check surrounding. Tiles at row, column, board, row, column, then return. All right, so it's going to go through this double for loop, and it's if if the space is null, then obviously that's an open space. You can move there. Otherwise, we're going to check the surrounding tiles and see if they can combine, basically. So let's create this method. We need a private boolean. Check surrounding tiles. It takes in a row, a column, and a tile current. Okay. So, um, in this method, what we're going to do is say, well, if the row is greater than zero, what? Um, if the row is greater than zero, Then it's gonna check it, check the tile at the board row minus zero minus one column. If the check is null, then you can combine. So return true. If the tile dot get value, if the current sorry the currents dot get value equals the check dot get value, return true. Alright. This is basically saying as long as the row, if the row is zero, then don't check off the row because then that would create some sort of uh, out of bounds exception. So we only want to make we want to make sure that it's in the boundaries that we're checking. Now we want to check if uh, you move down a row. It's the same concept. You get the 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 column. You get the tile at the space that you're checking. Uh, tile check. If the check is null, return true. You could condense this to just say if the check is null or the current that get value equals the check that get value, and then return true. But I'm just gonna do it like this. And I keep saying tile is current dot get value equals check dot get value return true let's just copy this a few times if the column is greater than zero then we can check the tile to the left 
So we're going to do column minus 1. And we're not going to change the row. And same goes with if the column is less than all the total calls minus 1, then we're going to do column plus 1 and check like that. Otherwise, return false. So if none of these get hit, then uh, the, this tile can't combine. And that's often the case. Uh, well, not often the case, but this will get hit. It might seem like, oh, well, there's like so many times when, you know, it would return true. But you'd be surprised. If you have a tile in the corner and there's other tiles around it, then it can't combine or whatever. So, yeah. Hope this makes sense. If it doesn't, leave a comment. All right, so yeah, check that. It's going to check the surrounding tiles, blah, blah, blah. So if after it checks the surrounding tiles, it's just going to return. Well, if none of the tiles, if it didn't return, then dead equals true. And we're just going to set the high score. Again, I'm just going to leave this note to myself. You can too. Uh, we'll be doing high scores and like a timer after we get all the animations done. So that'll be in a couple tutorials. And all right, so we have that. We still need one more thing. Um, we need to actually move the tiles, and that is really important. So go up, and you should have in your update function a little note there that says reset position. And that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and reset the position of the current tile row column. So make a private method, private void reset position that takes in a tile current, a int, integer row, integer column. If current is null, then uh, we can't move it, obviously. If that wasn't obvious, then uh, I don't know why you're programming. But anyways, otherwise, the int, the x of the tile is going to be the tile.getx of column. Remember, we made, these, we made these methods a little while ago, like two tutorials ago, I think. The distance x will be tile uh, current dot get x, and we need to make these. So go ahead and make a um, just right click in here and go to source, generate getters and setters, x and y at the very bottom, add those in. You should get this, or you type it out manually. Whatever works. Dot get x minus x and distance y equals tile dot get y. Uh, I keep saying tile. Current dot get y minus y. All right. So like while the tile is moving, um, it's gonna get the x of the row and column and it's gonna see where your X is like pixel wise so it won't be like a perfect row and column and then we say well if the math if the absolute value the absolute value of the distance X is less than tile dot slide speed tile dot set current dot set X equal to current dot get X minus the distance X so basically the tiles move across at whatever this is so it's 20 20 pixels per update and it's basically saying well what if what if there's only 10 pixels to move so instead of moving 20 pixels and then moving back and forth and back and forth and creating this really annoying flickering effect it's gonna say well you know, it only has to move 10 pixels, so we're only going to move it 10 pixels. And that's what that does there. 
Also check on the Y. Same slide speed. Then we're gonna set the Y to the current Y minus the distance Y. All right, pretty simple so far. Uh, we only have a couple more checks to put in. If the distance X is less than zero, so if you're moving to the left, then we have to tile, we have to currents dot set the X equal to tile dot get X. <sighs> currents dot get X plus the speed of the tile slide speed. Um. Yep. If the distance y is less than zero, then current dot set y equal to current dot get y plus tile dot slide speed. Okay, it's basically the same thing for if you're going in the other direction. If the distance x is greater than zero, obviously if it is zero, then we're not gonna do anything at all. Current.setx, you will do currents.getx minus the tile slide speed. And finally, if the distance y is greater than zero, then currents dot set y equal to currents dot get y minus the tile dot slide speed. All right, um, that should be good. Reset position, wrong column, blah, blah, blah. All right, I think we are ready to test this out. Um, let me just make sure, I don't wanna mess this up. So I'm just gonna review the finish code to make sure it's just about the same. All right. Anyways, uh, let's try running this. Uh, let's go into the game board. Go into the game class. Make sure everything's good to go. We're updating the board, rendering the board. Let's go ahead and do this. We'll debug any issues if there are any. That took a while to load. Anyways, up, left, up, left. All right. So we have an obvious issue here. The tiles are drawing incorrectly. So I'm gonna go debug that issue and I'll get back to you guys when I have that fixed. So we'll see you guys there. Hey guys, I'm back and after debugging uh, for like 10 or so minutes, I found the issue. So first things first, this can combine variable needs to start out as true because if it's false, then on the first click of the arrow, when you try to combine, they won't be able to. So I debugged that just by printing out um, if you were able to move. I'll also show you a helpful method I created if just in case you want to create it as well. So yep, put that in. Other thing is, is when you set the value, you need to redraw the image. So add that in too after set value, int value. So this is like if I set the value to now 8, it needs to redraw the image. All right, that's it for the tile class. In this class, I added one thing uh, that I forgot, can move. So if the space is null, you need to set can move to true. That I just forgot to do. I'm not quite sure why. And that should fix it. Now to help me debug this, I created this method called spawn. So basically instead of just spawning in random on the start, I was able to spawn in um, using row and column and value. So I was just spawning in 
at zero zero spawn in two, zero one spawn in two, and I was checking to make sure to see the behavior of how the tiles would interact and whatnot. So yeah, this method you can copy it down. I'm gonna comment it out because we don't need it anymore. I'm also gonna comment this out and comment this back in. Uh, because we're back to spawning randoms. Now if I want to go ahead and run this. Yay, alright, so this is it. This is 2048. And, I mean, as for the logic in the game, that's basically it. Um, for this entire series. There's not much more to it. The game is playable. You can resize the map as well. Now you might now you might see like oh I think there's some glitches with the you know teleporting tiles or whatever it looks kind of weird that's just because we haven't added in any of the animations yet and um, in the next video we will be adding in the animations so that should get fixed then and anyways um, just to prove that you can mess around with the variables go into your tile class. And let's change things up. Let's change the width to 100. This is how I have it on my other one. I think it's a bit smoother if you do 100, 130. Also, make sure that you set the size. Uh, we don't need the height so much, so we'll set that to 560, and also set the width to like 500. All right. And there we go. It's a bit funky looking like this. But yeah, it basically works the exact same way. It is just different size. Um, that is why you use variables when you program because now you can just you can change it to anything. You can even, if you wanted to, go into the game board class and change the wrong columns. So let's say I wanted to have five rows and five columns. Make this a little bigger, make this a little bigger. and that is ginormous but you see it still works how it's supposed to work all the logic stays the same because we used all those variables and like that it is beautiful and you can get to super high scores whatever and yeah that's basically it for this tutorial. I'll see you guys in the next one where we go ahead and um, I'm just going to change these back to 4. And I'm going to change these back to like 500 and 600. So I'll see you guys in the next tutorial where we implement the animations, I think. Yeah, we'll do the animations in the next tutorial because I think that'll make it look much better in terms of how it's playable. And uh, see you guys there.